Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Iron Africa with me, Georgia Cavan Smith. Tonight, at least 11 people die as security forces fire on crowds protesting in Democratic Republic of Congo. President Joseph Kabila's refusal to leave office at the end of his mandate this week has sparked violence and deepened the country's political crisis. Also, houses that are burnt out shells, charred cars and petrol, bomb, petrol pumps lining the roads in the once bustling Nigerian trade hub of Bama. This was before it was raised by Boko Haram jihadists. Many communities in Guinea-Bissau live in constant danger of bites from venomous snakes. A shortage in anti-venom is costing lives. Across the continent, nearly 20,000 people are dying because of a scarcity of the antidote. But first, at least a dozen people have been killed in deadly protests across DR Congo against President Joseph Kabila's refusal to leave office after the end of his constitutional mandate. Now, tension had been mounting for months ahead of Monday's deadline. Elections have been postponed and a controversial court order recently ruled that Kabila could stay in power until a successor is chosen. Now, there have been cries of treason from the opposition. In anticipation of unrest, social media has been blocked and troops patrolled Kinshasa's streets, even as the sounds of gunfire could be heard in parts of the city. Thomas Nicolon brings us more from the Congolese capital. It has been a deadly day in Kinshasa. There were clashes between protesters and the security forces all day. According to the government, nine people got killed today in Kinshasa. But according to the UN Human Rights Director for Congo, uh, there are solid reports that 20 people got killed today in Kinshasa. And there is one dead body that we saw with our own eyes in, in the Ngaba district. And the people of that neighborhood were keeping uh, the young man's body with them. Uh, he was 17 years old and uh, they were keeping him under a blanket uh, so that they could bury him themselves. In the south of DR Congo, in Lubumbashi, the governor said that two people got killed today. One of them was a protester and the other one uh, was a policeman lynched by the crowd. It is very hard to know at the moment if things are going to remain calm going forward in DR Congo. France 24's Thomas Nicolau there for us in Kinshasa. Now, talks between the government and parts of the Congolese opposition aimed at ending the standoff are due to restart later this week. But the country already faces a deepening political crisis. Nicolas Germain tells us more. Violence had already flared up when Congo's main opposition leader, Etienne Chisikedi, spoke. His advisers posted a video on YouTube, but it could not be watched in Congo, where access to social media has been restricted since Sunday evening. I'm launching a solemn appeal to the Congolese people not to recognize the illegal and illegitimate authority of Joseph Kabila and to resist his coup peacefully. Etienne Chisikedi said he accepted to continue to hold talks to find a solution to this political crisis. But these talks now appear unlikely as a new government was announced on Monday evening. Prime Minister Sami Badibanga heads an expanded 65-member cabinet. I wish to appeal for peace and tranquility throughout the Republic. The government is taking measures through the forces of law and order to ensure that public order is maintained in the respect of law and freedom for all. Joseph Kabila's mandate officially ended this Tuesday. But an agreement signed between the ruling coalition and a small fraction of the opposition has pushed back the presidential election to April 2018 at the earliest. This deal is strongly rejected by Chisikedi and his allies. Congo's political situation has sparked concern internationally. On Tuesday, France called on the EU to re-examine its relations with Congo. Paris fears that Kabila's decision not to step down could stoke conflict. Now, 11 Gambian ambassadors serving in countries around the world have called on President Yaya Jame to accept his electoral loss to rival Adama Barrow. Jame had originally conceded defeat in the December 1st vote, but he since called for a new poll. Regional powers from the ECOWAS bloc have been trying to convince him to step down. 
On Tuesday, Senegal's president, whilst on a trip to Paris, said that it was Jamé's duty to do so. There is an urgency to respect the sovereign will of the Gambian people. In a republic, in a democracy, it is the people who are the sovereign. Once they decide, one must give way. That's why Senegal did not hesitate to give its clear position on this question. And ECOWAS unanimously agreed with the Gambian people in their choice and invited President Jamé to respect this sovereign choice. Hundreds of people turned out in Tunis on Tuesday to protest the killing of an engineer that Palestinian Isla Islamist movement Hamas has blamed on Israel. Mohamed Zauri, who was a drone expert who Hamas says had worked for it for a decade, was riddled with bullets last Thursday. He'd been sitting at the wheel of his car outside of his home in the city of Sfax. Several Tunisian suspects have been held for questioning. The Interior Ministry is also looking for at least two foreigners in connection to the murder, which it says was planned back in June. A Guinean soldier who shot coup leader Dadis Kamara dead in 2009 has been arrested in Senegal. Abu Bakr Siddiqui Diakite, known as Tumba, shot Kamara in the head in Conakry, accusing his former ally of wanting him to, be, to bear the sole responsibility for the massacre of 157 people at an opposition rally earlier that year. Now, rights activists see Diakite's arrest as a major step forward in the investigation into the mass killing in the hopes that he will be brought to justice. The once bustling Nigerian trade hub of Bama is no more. That's the fear of many of those who used to call it home before it was razed to the ground by Boko Haram. The extremists first seized Bama and then killed and torched all in their path as they were forced out by Nigerian soldiers earlier this year. Little of the damage has since been undone. The largest town that Boko Haram ever controlled lies in ruins, its homes empty. Bama in northeastern Nigeria was occupied by the Islamic militant group for seven months. During that time, the town was destroyed. When Boko Haram invaded the town, they set all these places on fire. The place where I'm standing now, it was a maternity home of the General Hospital Bama. Now it has been made to be a deserted area. Nigeria's army recaptured the town in March 2015. But although the militants were driven out, they remain nearby in the Sambisa forest. Despite the fragile peace, authorities in Bama claim they've beaten Boko Haram. Boko Haram have been defeated. They have been chased out of all our communities. They do not have the capacity to hold on to any territory in Nigeria. Tens of thousands of people displaced by the violence continue to live in camps. Authorities say they should be able to go home within six months. But for those scarred by the occupation, the thought of returning home is alarming. I was there when they killed my husband and my relatives. Some of them were even burnt alive in their homes. If I go home, Boko Haram will kill me and there's nothing to eat. As security slowly improves in the northeast, the full extent of the devastation caused by Boko Haram is being laid bare. According to the World Bank, it will take nearly $6 billion to rebuild northeastern Nigeria. But no amount of money will heal the trauma still felt by those who survived. Now, many communities in Guinea-Bissau live in constant danger of bites from venomous snakes, and a shortage in anti-venom is costing lives. Across the continent, nearly one million people are bitten by the reptiles every year. And the scarcity of antidotes contributes to the deaths of more than 20,000 people. We seem to be having a technical difficulty, so you'll just have to join us again in our next edition of Iron Africa when we return in 45 minutes to get a look at that report. But that, in the meantime, thanks very much for joining us. And for more news and headlines from around the world, check out our website, www.france24.com. Join us again if you can. Take care.
Hello there, this is Live from Paris on France 24. Get connected with France 24 social media. Take the first step. Tweet. Like. Become a fan of. Break away from your TV. Find another dimension. Become even more linked up to the news with francevancat.com together with our mobile and tablet apps. France Vancat. Get a connected view of the world.